Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and uh, in this video I want to introduce you guys to this notion of dimensionality reduction. And so, the name sounds much scarier than it actually is. So let me just kind of give you a an intuitive understanding of what it is, and then we're just going to like look at an example of how we would do this. And the reason we're talking about this is because two of the algorithms that we're going to be discussing, um, particular eigenfaces and Fisher faces, are used for face recognition. Uh, under the hood, they actually use uh, two algorithms called principal components analysis and linear discriminant analysis. And both of these are a kind of dimensionality uh, reduction. And so to um, this video is going to kind of introduce you to this uh, concept of dimensionality reduction so that we can talk about the two face recognition algorithms uh, a bit easier. So what is dimensionality reduction. So this just describes a set of algorithms whose purpose is to take data in you know a higher dimension so higher dimension data and represent it well in a lower dimension data in in a lower dimension basically. And so I've been using this word dimension a lot. Uh, so Here's an example, actually, that I've drawn of a of a scatter plot. So this is just a, a plain old scatter plot, nothing fancy about it. So this scatter plot is actually in 2D, and in the example that we're going to be using, we're primarily going to be going from two dimensions to one dimension. And so 2D is a plane, and so this you know is the or x x y plane. This is you know, also called the Cartesian coordinate plane. Um, but the point is, it's in two dimensions, and why it's in two dimensions is because we, to you know, to represent any point in this coordinate system, you need two things to identify it uniquely. You need an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So each of these needs an x coordinate and a y coordinate to uniquely identify this. And so, you know, kind of the examples that we're going to be going from is 2D to 1D. And so, what is one dimension? Well, that's just a line. It's a number line, right? So, because you only need one thing to uniquely identify something on a, to uniquely identify a point on a number line, you just need a single, a, a you know, a one component, basically. So that's what I mean. So then, this is kind of what we'll be using for examples, because going and, and this can be applied to like going from three dimensions to two dimensions. But it's just easier to draw it if it's from two dimensions to one dimension. So I'm just going to be using this uh, for now. So, uh, yeah, so what we're going to be doing is we need to find a way to take this data in two dimensions and represent it well in, uh, in one dimension. And so you might be asking, well, wait a minute. How do we do that if the data is in, in two dimensions? You know, how do we just like cut off? one one portion of, of a dimension, you know. So what we'll be doing is we'll be dealing with these things called projections. And uh, to to handle this intuitively, uh, let me explain to you what a projection uh, really does. So uh, how we can reduce dimensionality is you know commonly through uh, finding an axis to project our points down to a lower dimensional axis to project our, our points down to. So what I mean by, I've been using the word projection, but what I, what I mean by that is, let's suppose that we wanted to project all these points onto the x-axis. So what I mean by that is we want to take all these points and then plot them along just the x-axis. And because the x-axis is a line, then we've effectively done our job. We've taken something in 2D, the scatter plot in two dimensions, and we can represent it in on a one-dimensional line. So to do this, we have to use projections. So what a projection is, is imagine I have like a, imagine I have like a, a flashlight or like a series of different flashlights and this x-axis was a, a wall and these so these points on the scatter plot were like, um, like, you know, some sort of object that's kind of in the way. And so what I do is I take this uh, a light and I make it so that it is perpendicular to the x axis. In other words, it forms a right angle. So I shoot rays of light at my flashlight 
and I keep, you know, shooting these rays of lights onto this so that they all kind of go down um, in this way. And so what happens is these points are in the way. So these points are actually going to cast uh, shadows along this wall, right? So these objects are going to cast shadows. And so where along the wall are these objects going to cast shadows? Well, if I have a ray of light coming in here, then it's going to cast a shadow, and it's going to be right here is where it will, you know, where the shadow will be on the wall. And so I can do the same for this point. I can, you know, if I have a ray of light going right here, then it seems that this point right here would also, you know, have a shadow right here. So let's do this for all the points. So let me go back to this point, and if I draw this point, and I draw this line, then the shadow is going to appear roughly right here. And so if I do this point, then the shadow should appear right here, because if I have my, my rays of light are going to be casting, you know, this objects are going to cast shadows, and I keep doing this, and you know, I will have an object right here now, and then I have this right here. Okay, and so now what I've done is I've actually taken my points and projected them along the x-axis. So I've done my job of dimensionality reduction. I've taken, now I have points that are in one dimension, right? So these points are along a, along a line. And so what we've done is using projections, we've taken data in two dimensions and projected it into data that's in one dimension. And this representation, this particular one, is actually a pretty good uh, act. We've chosen a pretty good axis, actually, to begin with, uh, the x-axis. So I wanted to show you what it looked like to choose a, to choose a good axis first, and then uh, we're actually going to go ahead and choose a bad, let's choose a bad axis to project onto now. So the x-axis, this is, you know, how we do projections. So now let me actually uh, project along the y-axis. And so, you know, how do we do something like, how do we project along the y-axis? Well, we just take our light and we make it so that it's now going to be going to the left. So now I can take my flashlights or something, and then now I'm going to make them go to the left. And so now let's do the same thing with projections. Well, then if I take this point here, it's going to be right here. Now the light is going to cast a shadow so that it, so on this wall of my y-axis, if I have some light here, it's going to cast a shadow like this. If I pick this point, then I get something like this here. And so if I get this point, though, you can see that it's actually kind of overlapping with this point. And so these two points are kind of like the shadows will be the same shadow, like right here. And then the same for these three points, actually. It turns out that these three points actually share, if I, you know, put two points, if I put these objects in a line, you know, and I cast some light on there, the shadows are going to kind of like overlap. Uh, here and so we just get one point uh, here and so you may be thinking well hey great this is good because we're kind of reducing our or you know we're reducing the number of data that we have but it turns out that this actually isn't a good an axis to to use this isn't a good line to to use the x-axis was good and so the the the, you know, the class of algorithms for dimensionality reduction are most concerned about picking Picking a good axis. So that's kind of what this whole notion of dimensionality reduction, like the two algorithms that we're going to be talking about in the next uh, video, they're most concerned about picking a good axis to cast our light, to cast our shadows on. And this is what's called a, this what's known as a projection. And so, you know, how does this work? I've been talking a lot about this these like scatter plot stuff, but how does this work with how does this work with images actually? Because the two algorithms that we're going to be discussing are dealing with images. Well, it turns out you can think of the dimensionality of you know an image. So like suppose I have this is a ten by ten image here. So what is you know what is the dimensionality of this image? Well the dimensionality is equal to the number of pixels in this image. So this image is actually in 
a 100, it's a point in 100 dimensional space. And that's really hard to think about. I mean, most, uh, most experienced mathematicians have difficulty I imagining, visualizing the fourth dimension as in, you know, a hundred, I'm asking you to think of something in a hundred dimensions. Ugh, that's, it's not, you know, that's not good. And uh, it's kind of, we kind of get the same thing. We kind of get the same principle with when we were, when we were discussing face detection is, do we really need a hundred dimensions to tell us if two images are, you know, the same or not, or if two uh, faces are identical? And it turns out that, no, we really don't. And so what, we, what we're trying to do is take something in like 100 dimensional space and bring it down to something like, I don't know, maybe like 10 dimensional space or something like that. And then we can just compare the two, uh, the input image. We do the same thing with the input image as we convert it to uh, 100. We, you know, convert from 100 dimensional space down to 10 dimensional space or something and compare the two. Even 10 dimensional space is pretty, very impossible to, uh, visualize well, but it might be that, you know, 10 things that can identify a point in 10 dimensions will, uh, you know, work, maybe 10 numbers works well, and we can kind of reduce, you know, our, our dimensionality of, of the image, and all of this is going to be kind of happening under the hood by OpenCV, so you don't have to try to wrap your head around a hundred dimensional space. But the principle here is the same. We just want to take something that's in a higher dimension and move it to a lower dimension with a simple representation so that we don't have to deal with like a hundred numbers representing a face for in this case versus 10 numbers representing a face. And, and in reality, um, the images, the input images are going to be much higher than a hundred dimensions. This is actually really small, but we want to reduce that dimensionality so that we can compare two images in a relatively a lower uh, dimensionality, and so we can get a a good result that helps up that helps improve accuracy uh, and and efficiency, and so that is uh, just the and actually just a quick sidebar. As it turns out, you can use the same dimensionality reduction techniques to um, take a point, to take a, an image, and actually plot it on like a plot like a scatter plot, and you know if two images are close to each other, that would mean that these two images are actually similar, like they're really close to each other. And so you can do all sorts of cool things with dimensionality reduction, but it turns out it's also super useful for face uh, recognition. And so there are two algorithms that we're going to be talking about in the next uh, few videos about how, you know, and they describe basically ways to how we can choose a good axis. So uh, anyway, this is where I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to do a quick recap. So with dimensionality reduction, what we're trying to do is Take something that's in a higher dimensionality and represent it simply in a lower dimensionality. So I showed this example with the scatter plot. I want to take this two-dimensional data in X and Y and just represent it in on a line. And so a way to do that is to use these things called projections. And so with projections, imagine that the axis that you want to project on is a wall and you have a light, like a flashlight that's projecting, you know, in this like projecting the light rays in perpendicular to to this wall so that these points are like random objects and so when you cast the light that will make shadows along the wall and you plot where the shadows are on the wall and then that gives you you know we can now successfully take data from two dimensions and put it in one dimension by looking at the shadows that these cast it's also you know kind of why they're called projections because if you can think of it as a light uh, projecting a shadow basically so that is uh, dimensionality reduction, and then in the next few videos, we're going to be discussing two particular algorithms that we can use uh, to answer this question of how do we pick a good axis. So I'm going to get to the first one called uh, eigenfaces and principal components analysis uh, in the next video.